What is up ladies and gents? Welcome to the video. This is going to be my top 10 runes for SOD level 25 PvP. So this isn't going to be anything to do with, with you know, future phases. This is right now. And this is something that we've kind of crowdsourced a little bit with chat. We, we, you know, had a lot of back and forth discussions, that kind of thing. So it's not only my own opinions. That being said, if there are any runes you think that have been missed off out of the top 10, please do let me know. Keep in mind, even though your rune picks that you thought might be in the top 10 aren't there, there will be some honorable mentions at the end with explanations and such so make sure you watch until the end of the video and keep in mind that this is for general pvp so this is this is duels this is uh you know bg's wars on gulch uh and it's world pvp so everything combined overall strength so without further ado let's get into the top 10. number 10 is gonna be avengers shield and it's a ranged aoe slow that requires you to use a shield but you can just switch to a shield and use it and this actually just allows rets to connect where otherwise they wouldn't be able to. Their mobility is really bad other than this. Uh, and so this is the thing that is making rets so good right now. They are able to throw this, this Avenger shield out. If you can't dispel it, then you basically need to be a druid to be able to shift it. Otherwise, this ret is catching you. And when the rets catch you, they hurt. So this is what is making Avenger shield for me number 10 right now. And until recently, this this was actually counted as a day, so you couldn't even shift it as a druid. You couldn't free action potion it. And so this actually got nerfed quite recently. Otherwise, this would actually be higher on the list. Either. Next up, at number nine, we are going to have Void Plague. Now, you'll notice a lot of the spells in this list are actually instants, and that's because casting in Classic is actually quite difficult. A lot of things have longer casts, and there's a lot of pushback. So instants are valuable and Void Plague is no exception. It's both the strongest dot in the game right now and one of the highest damage per global buttons that you can press full stop. It's also very, very efficient. It costs less mana than a Shadowed Pain and does over twice the damage. So it's a super valuable button to be pressing. On top of all that, it scales really well with spell power, adding an extra 20% of your spell damage per tick for a total of 120% of your spell power increase over the duration. Coming in at number eight, we have Heart of the Lion. And on the face of it, this one looks very simple, but it actually provides so much raw power. It stacks with all the other hunter aspects and it gives the hunter themselves an extra 20% overall stats, which is actually huge when you think about it. On top of that, it also gives all their party members an extra 10% stats. So if you add up all the numbers, this is so much more added value for you and your team. So in any sort of group combat, this is gonna give you all a lot more raw power. And that's why it's such a high value rune. Number seven is going to be Wild Growth. And this is another relatively simple one that really just has a lot of raw power behind it. It's another instant cast, and it's one of the highest HBS spells in the game, along with Prayer of Mending, actually. So it's actually a really, really versatile AoE heal, where it heals all party members of the target within a 40 yard range. So this actually allows you to top any group in the raid, not just your own. So this is very, very valuable in things like Warsong Gulch, where there can be a lot of people taking damage and can, you know, get that really valuable heal off to sort of keep the, the team going, keep the team healthy. Uh, but also it can be used in solo PvP as well, where if you're kiting away, it can actually be a really valuable tool to stay alive. Even though it's only healing one player, it's super, super useful. At number six, we have Prayer of Mending. And this was actually really close with Wild Growth as they both fill kind of similar niches, but I just feel like Prayer of Mending is a little bit more versatile. And with the small change that they've done in SOD, whereby you are able to proc it via healing as well as via taking damage, I think that kind of just edges it a little bit above as you have a little bit more control over the spell than you usually would. And it's not constrained to groups. On top of that, it's a lot more mana efficient and it's one of the highest HPS spells in the game uh, as long as you consume all five charges. Now, as I said earlier, you're able to proc this with healing as well. So you can use things like Lesser Heal Rank 1 or Renew Rank 1 to continue to bounce your Pomerant if it gets stuck on somebody or pet. And this makes it very, very powerful. On top of that, it scales really, really well with bonus healing, I believe better than Wild Growth at 43% of your bonus healing her charge now we are coming into the top five and at number five we have haunt now haunt is another instant cast and it is not only doing a nice chunky bit of damage it also increases the damage of all the other warlock dots on the target by 20 percent 
If it's dispelled or it expires, it will heal the Warlock for all of the damage that it's done. Overall, it's providing a really, really high amount of added pressure in terms of damage, but it also really increases the Warlock's survivability and is just all around a very powerful button. A nice added perk to this one is that it will also heal the Warlock if the target was shielded, which is not true for other drains. It has a pretty decent scaling considering it's an instant of 43%. And you could have probably guessed this next one was coming. At number four, we have Master Channeler. Bruh. Another instant cast and a pretty high damage dot, all things considered. This is probably the main thing that a lot of melee are complaining about when it comes to Warlocks and the reason that they are really having a hard time killing them. It gives the Warlock a tremendous amount of increased survivability with the added healing that it's providing. It's difficult to avoid. You can outrange it, but any Warlock worth their salt is going to keep in range so that it doesn't expire. The damage scales with Haunt, and this in turn increases the healing that it provides. So this combo is particularly deadly. And as Mortal Strike is not available at this tier, the talent becomes even stronger. You might see this falling off in later tiers. Now into the top three, and these are the most complained about runes in the game and with reason. At number three, we've got Beast Mastery. And this is the cause of so much grief. It gives the pet 30% more HP and it does 30% more damage. On top of that, the focus regen is tremendously increased. And this is why you have wind serpents flying around doing obscene damage to people. You have all sorts of videos of people running uh, Eyes of the Beast and going around one shotting people because the wind serpent lightning breath can actually crit for around 300. And it's relatively spammable based on how much focus you have. So these are really ones to watch out for. And that's the reason why they're so strong is this rune. Now, number two and one might be up for some debate. And you may have guessed them already. But at number two, I have put Star Surge. And since the buff to this ability, it has become insane. It's instant. It can crit for over 400. It's an insanely low cost mana spell of only four. It has 42 yard range if you take the range talent in balance tree. The cooldown is only six seconds and it scales 100% with spell power as an instant cast. This is absolutely insane. I have no idea where they got the numbers for on this. They really did want to get balance into the meta and you know what, that's one way to do it. I feel a little bit bad if it does get nerfed because the rest of their kit is pretty mediocre but this one rune alone is bringing a balanced druids by the scruff of the neck up into s tier it is bonkers and it makes you wonder what could possibly be better than this in the first spot take your guesses now put it in the comments if you don't want to get any spoilers i am really interested to see what people actually think is the top ranked rune in the game before i reveal it uh if not sit tight here it comes the best rune in the game for SOD 25 PvP is Furious Thunder. Ooh. I'm kidding, it's complete dog. It's, of course, Penance. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. I don't know. Maybe if I was biased, I wouldn't say it was rank one. Not sure. It basically has very, very, very high single target HPS. It will pretty much top you from 40% to full. And it's just really, really versatile. It's really, really strong defensively, but you can use it offensively as well. And because it's three ticks, it's extra pushback. It's incredibly mana efficient. The second most efficient priest heal actually after Prayer of Mending, as long as it gets five ticks. It scales really, really well with spell power and healing at 85% over the whole cast. And the icing on the cake, and maybe the funniest thing of all, maybe not if you're not playing Priest, is the fact that cast bars in SOD right now are bugged. And what I mean by that is people cannot see channeled casts. They will have to see the animation in game if they want to see penance being cast. So most of the time it won't even get interrupted. So that is why I'm putting it at spot number one. As I said, maybe you have a different opinion. Maybe you think Penance is just as busted as I do. I hope it doesn't get nerfed, but that is the top dog. Now, there are a few honorable mentions. Divine Storm. The perks of this ability, obviously the fact that it's AOE. However, it does do really solid single target damage as well with a 110% weapon damage feed. It can crit for over 300, 
and it heals for 25% on three party and raid members. On top of that, it can actually proc an AoE stun if you're running Seal of Justice. So overall, it's just a really valuable button push. We got Way of Earth, and this really nearly made it into the top 10, but as I said, it was very, very competitive, and this was just a little bit too situational, and that will be a common theme for a lot of the, the runes on the honorable mentions section where they're quite good or really very good in certain situations but then completely useless in other ones or just get axed on by other runes. Way of Earth is one of those where it will make shamans really tanky and solid for a dueling overall but there are a lot more situations where there's other options that are better. It does make them very good flag carries in Warsong but that was kind of the extent. Next up we've got Meta and this allows Warlocks to be really really strong into melee but not so much against casters and Haunt kind of overall outshone it a little bit in the hands of a more skilled warlock player it did allow warlocks to frontline a little bit more in warsong but the spells that it takes away kind of limit the capabilities of the class a little bit more and for me i think that horn is just the superior pick if you are putting it in the hands of a skilled player next up we've got homunculi and again great for dueling great in world pvp but i just could not leave pom off with how strong pom is in group pvp homunculi didn't make a cut as a result and this was a really tricky decision for me because i do love uh, the homies but yeah they didn't make it on this time as i said it's a very very tough top 10 next up we got survival of the fittest similar to way of earth really it just makes flag carrier druids way tankier but it's too much of a niche rune and while it does really shine in that specific situation there are not that many others where you would want to take it over the three wrath which also, I guess, could do with an honourable mention. Not a bad pick either. Again, not a, not good enough to make it into the top uh, top ten, I would say, but still worth a shout. And then finally, between the eyes. And honestly, I'm sure there's loads more that deserve an honourable mention. Again, if you think uh, if you think I've missed something, please, I'm sure I have. Please do let me know in the comments, and we uh, we can chat about it. But yeah, between the eyes, almost made it in. And as Rogue's only stun at the moment, it is very class-defining right now. However, it is just isn't quite strong enough in group combat. It isn't that thing that will swing the battle in your favor. It is still a little bit too niche. That is why it is only an honorable mention. That was it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I uh, had a lot of fun making this one. We, we had a lot of fun with chat, theory crafting it, and so on. If you'd like to actually see the the making of this where we sort of went through theory crafted it made a huge long list of runes that kind of stuff i can do a, a making of video if not we'll continue on with the the pure stuff or and the educational stuff in the pvp it really does depend on what you guys want to see so yeah just let me know thank you so much for sticking around if you made it to the end and have a good one